Hey guys, Rob here at 3D Printscape. A while back I did a video showing how to upgrade to a glass bed on the Ender 3. Um, I got a lot of feedback from that video that I wanted to kind of account for, so I figured it'd be easier to do a new video, kind of bring all that in together. So that's what we're going to do today. So one of the questions that kept coming up is, is it actually an upgrade moving to a glass bed? Because you have to uh, account for adhesion and all the other, I guess, things that go along with it. And I guess the short answer is, it depends on what you're trying to do. So let's talk about the benefits of a glass bed. Uh, so it provides you a smooth build surface, um, assuming you get one that is smooth. Uh, so the bottom of your print would be completely smooth, uh, where that would not be the case with your standard or stock build plate. Um, it, they're also more durable and uh, overall through the life of your printer it's going to cost you less money uh, because you're not going to have to replace them or anything like that unless something goes really bad. Um, I've scratched glass beds before but I haven't shattered them and in most cases you can just flip them over and just use the other side without any issues. Next the glass bed does conduct heat a lot better than uh, these build plates do. Um, so with that, you're gonna get up to temperature quicker and then have a more even uh, temperature on the build surface. And then uh, maintenance is also a lot easier on a glass bed. You just take it off, uh, just take it over to your sink, uh, just wash it off, and then if you want to, when you're done, you can use uh, alcohol pads and kind of wipe the top surface that you're gonna be using uh, just to help adhesion as well. But that is a lot easier than trying to clean these, especially if they're older and then have been beat up quite a bit. You can get them looking decent, uh, but they scratch and get damaged quite easy. And then lastly, it'll give you more of a consistent build surface. So one of the issues that come up on a lot of the Ender 3 or just uh, this type of printer in general is the actual build surface uh, is warped many times. Uh, so that warp can get worse over time as well. Uh, you can use things like the BL Touch and stuff to account for it, uh, but depending upon how warped the bed is, uh, you could have to change the grid and everything to account for that as well. Um, I mean, the default grid for your BL Touch is going to be a 3x3. Three three. Um, in some cases, I've seen people have to take that up higher just to get more measurements to account for the warp in the uh, build plate. Uh, so a glass bed does kind of help even that out. That said, if it's too bad, um, the glass bed could also uh, have the same type of issues. They won't be as bad, but they could still be there, especially if you're warp going from side to side. And in that case, you're probably going to want to be able to touch anyways. Um, the BL Touch has probably been one of my favorite upgrades. It's awesome. So if you don't have it yet, I would highly recommend you getting it. All right, so let's talk about the glass beds for a second. I've got two of them here. Uh, I've got just a generic piece of glass. Uh, this one is obviously going to be the cheaper option, um, but there's nothing fancy about it. It's just a piece of glass that fits over the build plate. And then I also picked up a Creality one as well. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out is the top of the surface is textured. That's going to help with adhesion, but it's not going to give you that smooth surface that you might be looking for if you're switching to a glass bed. So you just keep that in mind if that's what you're trying to get, uh, because that might not be the best option. I also know that some people have flipped this over because the bottom of it is completely smooth. That will work, but the glass is not going to be directly on the heated build plate, so it could take a little bit longer to heat up. So just keep that in mind. Uh, overall, uh, the Creality glass is a little bit thicker. Uh, this one is four millimeters, where your standard piece here is three. Um, if you're careful with it, it won't make a big difference either way. Uh, if you're not, that extra thickness could potentially save you a build plate. Um, so I guess those are just a couple things to consider uh, when trying to decide which one you want to buy. I think the price difference between the two is like three or four bucks. It's not that big of a difference. Uh, then one other thing, um, this one came with the clips to actually hold the bed in place, where the Creality one did not. Um, the clips aren't expensive, but if you're just buying the Creality one, make sure you get the clips separately, which we'll talk about here when we go through the install process. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over to the install and get started. All right, so I went ahead and zoomed in on the printer. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use the Creality glass. Uh, but the process is pretty much going to be the same either way. Uh, so first thing I'm going to want to do is take off the old build plate. And this was one part that I wanted to kind of talk about a little bit more. So 
the initial round of testing that I did when I switched over to uh, just your plain glass build plate, I did not remove this surface. I didn't have any issues. I ran, uh, I think it was four or five prints through it, uh, a couple hours a piece, and I didn't have any issues. But there were people who were reporting um, that the actual magnetic uh, surface here kind of adhered to the glass build plate. So if you're going to be doing longer prints or running anything at a higher temperature, uh, I would recommend just taking this off. It will make it more difficult to go back to the other build surface, um, but not impossible. But I think overall it'll give you the better experience. So that's what we're going to walk through now is we're going to go ahead and remove this. Another thing I wanted to point out here is if you print with uh, high temperatures for your build plate, you could potentially have issues with the magnetic surface anyways. Uh, once you get above 80 degrees, it starts to lose some of the magnetic properties, and I've seen the build surface start to slide on it. Um, I mean, that's not an issue if you're just printing PLA. I mean, out of the box, if you're just printing PLA, uh, the Ender 3 stock uh, will meet most of the needs. There are a couple tweaks I'd recommend doing, like the BL Touch, uh, some of the spring upgrades, things like that, which I'll get into in another video. Uh, but if you're starting to get into more of your uh, specialty filaments, uh, this build surface just isn't that good. All right, so let's go ahead and take this off. You can kind of just peel it off from the corners here, and then I'm going to grab a little putty knife to help. All right, guys, we got the magnetic surface off. Um, I've had a couple people say that they were able to get it off without really damaging it. Uh, I've never been able to. It's kind of a pain. Maybe if it's a newer printer that hasn't been ran much, it might be easier to come off, um, but it's really kind of a pain. So if you're really careful, you might be able to do it. Um, I had no intentions of reusing it, so I didn't really care, uh, but just keep that in mind. All right, so now let's go ahead and lower the build plate as far down as it can go. All right, so I think we're pretty much about as low as we can go here. I do have the aftermarket springs on here, so it might be a little bit higher than where you would be if you're running the stock ones. But now let's go ahead and grab our build plate and set it on here. And then go ahead and grab our clips and kind of just clip it in place. Um, so I'm just... All right, so I use four clips here. I pretty much two on each side. Keep in mind that the clips are there if you're doing any type of slicing and cura and you remove the disallowed areas. Uh, I'll link to the video I did on that below, but. Um, you want to make sure that you're not going to run the extruder into any of the clips. All right, so what I want to do here is push the bed all the way back and bring our Z-axis down as far as it goes so that we hit the end stop here. Uh, let me adjust the angle a little bit more. Yeah, so here's the end stop. Um, if With the BL Touch, a lot of this isn't necessary because this is going to act as your end stop on the Z-axis. But if you're not running one, you want to make sure that the glass isn't going to be too thick. All right, so let's just bring this down a bit further. And right there, um, I think that we are a tad bit too low. When your printer homes, it's gonna come off to the corner a little bit. Uh, so you wanna make sure that your Z-stop is set so that it goes slightly below uh, where the glass would be. At this point, we really have three options. It's either it looks good and we're going to move on from here and not have to make any adjustments. That would be the best case scenario and the scenario if you have a BL Touch. Uh, the next thing we can do is try to align it just right um, based on just uh, kind of gauging it. Or the third option would be to uh, just kind of uh, take the glass back off and use that as a thickness just to raise the Z-stop by that much, which I'm going to do really quick. All right, so here's where our Z-stop is. 
So we just want to loosen these up a tad bit so we can move it up and down. And then uh, take our bill plate, uh, just kind of slide it right here so that this little plastic piece sits on it and then just tighten it back up. Uh, this is the easiest way to account for it and to make sure that you're good. Um, if you have a BL touch, it's not needed. Right, so now that that's in place, we're going to put this back on. And then make sure you finish tightening this up. Again, this might not be needed. It's really more of a precaution. Um, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Uh, what could potentially happen if that's not set right is you can have the nozzle go straight into the bill plate, uh, potentially scratching it or worse. All right, so now that that's done, uh, let's go ahead and level everything out. All right, so there are a lot of factors that go into leveling, especially based on the firmware you're running. And the process can be different based on whether you have the BL touch or not. So if you're running the stock setup, I'm just going to link to a video uh, below. Uh, just I go through the entire leveling process in that video. Uh, so I would recommend checking that out. If you're running it with the BL Touch, it's a bit different. Um, so I'm just going to go through and kind of just get a decent level uh, manually. And then if your Z offset was already set correctly before, you won't have to adjust that again. Uh, but I'll go through and just verify everything checks out. So what I'm going to do is kind of move this into place a little bit and then uh, bring it down. So, all right, so now that we're in place on the first corner here, I'm going to uh, go ahead and get to the point where it's where I want it to be. All right, so that feels good. Now I'm going to move it over to the next corner, uh, keeping an eye on the bed to make sure that as I'm moving it, it's not going to scratch it which it will. So, All right, so since we were scraping, I wanna go ahead and raise this side a bit uh, just to make sure that we have room to work uh, so that now we should be in a decent spot. So if I bring this back down, all right, that's good. I should now be able to go across without it scraping. I'm switching to this side and yes, that looks pretty good. I might not even have to make any adjustments here. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. All right, so now let's go ahead and move it back to our third position. Make sure that we're not gonna scrape and we're good, but we do have to raise this side a little bit more. So we're good there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing going over to our fourth corner. And that side's gonna to have to be raised a bit. All right, we're good there now. Now I'm gonna go back through it one more time. Uh, I'm just going to uh, speed up the camera really quick. All right, so I think we're good now. And if you have a BL touch, you don't have to get it exactly perfect because it's gonna account for a lot of it in the software. Uh, but you wanna make sure that you can move everything around without it scraping before you turn it on. Because last thing you wanna do is go ahead and home it and it comes down and puts a huge scratch in your bill plate. Uh, that's, that'll make for a bad day. All right, so now that this is all in place, uh, next thing I wanna do is go ahead and power on and then uh, just verify that my Z offset looks right.
And again, the Z offset shouldn't need adjusted uh, because it's accounting for the distance between uh, where the probe is hitting and the nozzle. Uh, I'm just doing this more as a sanity check. So go into menu, go to movement, uh, ABL, and Z offset, and then turn that on and let it do its thing. All right, so I did have to make a slight adjustment. I think it's because I had it set wrong before and I like to play with things quite a bit. So anytime I go to I actually do something for real, I always go back and make sure that it is set correctly. Uh, because when you're constantly messing with the printer, you're constantly gonna have to go back and make sure that it's working right. Uh, hopefully I get to a point pretty soon where I'm done with the upgrades on this and then I'll just have it really set up to uh, just do my prints going forward. I picked up an Ender 5 uh, that should be here hopefully in the next week or so. I'm going to start doing some videos on that and that's going to come with the stock board as well so I'll be able to do a couple firmware upgrade guides uh, just to make sure you know how to do firmware upgrades if you're using the stock 32-bit board because it's different than the 8-bit board that I did the video on before. All right, so now let's go ahead and save this. And then we can go ahead and kick off a test print. Another thing that I wanted to point out really quick is that if you're using the smooth side of the build plate, or if this has been worn down quite a bit, you will have to use some sort of adhesion. Um, my favorite is bed weld, uh, which I've got here. I'll link to it in the description below. Uh, but I know a lot of people also use hairspray and a couple other things. Um, I just like this, it works good. Um, so I don't like changing things up once I know it's working. All right, so now let's go ahead and move this printer into place and I'm gonna kick off a test print, make sure it looks good. All right guys, so that's pretty much everything there is to it. Uh, it's printing fine right now. Uh, I wanna go through and make some adjustments just to fine tune the printer anyways, but that's not tied into uh, the build pad upgrade, which is working fine. It's doing everything it's supposed to be doing, no issues. Again, if you don't have the BL Touch, I would recommend getting it um, just because it makes a lot of the processes much easier and it's not that expensive. Uh, also, don't forget, uh, before you do anything, make sure that you manually level the bed with the printer off so that you're not gouging or scratching the glass bill plate on accident. Uh, it's easy to do, especially if you think it looks level, you turn it on, you go to home it, and it just, and it's a little bit too high, it's just going to scratch all the way across. I've seen it happen too many times. Uh, another thing to also uh, keep in mind is your Z-stop. Um, the easiest thing to do is just uh, go ahead and raise it the height or the thickness of the bill plate, uh, which I showed you earlier. Though that's not always necessary, uh, but it is the safest option. Uh, when I went through it with the first video with the three millimeter bill plate, which I have over here, I was able to get everything to balance out and completely level uh, without needing to adjust it. Uh, but I think around the four millimeter or higher, a lot of people have had some issues. Uh, especially if you're running the stock spring, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you have any questions about the process or would like me to do any other video, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.